Oh. By the way, I want to show you on these brakes. These springs here are very strong and it's difficult to get them on even with the adjusters uh, up here fully retracted to bring them in as far as I can. It's still difficult to get them on. You can see this one's this one here and this one down here is stretched more than the others. Um, they make a brake tool which is curved to go inside of here and then wrap around that and you just, you know, angle the spring onto there and it slips on. I don't have one of those tools, so I had to resort to uh, improvising. <laughs> I just got a, a long socket and a socket extension, and I hooked it around the spring, hooked around the spring, and then uh, anchored it on here and went back like that, and it slid on. It still wasn't easy, but it got the job done, and I didn't have to pay for a, a tool. So, just a tip. Well, it looks like I'm having trouble getting the springs on. And you know how I said I was able to get the springs on on the other side by using this socket. Well, for whatever reason, I don't know if these are newer springs or what, that socket won't fit it. And I can't find one that's small enough to fit inside that eye of the spring and also fit onto here, which is what I need. So. This is put off until tomorrow, but uh, I guess I can go get a proper spring tool so that I can do this. I tried a screwdriver. As you saw, I tried other things. I couldn't get it to behave, so we'll get the tool. We'll get it right and get this finished tomorrow, I hope. So, even with this scoop-shaped spring tool, it was still really difficult to get these on. This side was a lot more difficult than the other side for some reason. I was just able to use a screwdriver, but this side, quite a bit more stubborn. So there it is, springs are in, and uh, now let's get the other hub on and things greased and uh, go that way, but but first I'm going to go back behind and connect the brake lines to the cylinders. One thing I neglected to show you when I put this wheel together um, is this nut and washer. This nut and washer holds the shoe on, and whereas these posts really just provide support for the spring. But this is a, a self-locking nut, okay, which means that you know. No, no matter where it is on the threads here, it's going to stay, it's not going to come off. Um, and then the washer, you'll notice, I can, I don't know if you can see that, but I can move the washer just a little bit. And I think that's the way I want it. Now, there were no specific instructions given 
uh, in the literature about this nut and washer. But, I mean, just knowing what I know about brakes and this shoe being able to move like this, the hole here that this rests in is diagonal so that the shoe can move inward and out, outward based upon the pressure applied from the cylinders to stop the vehicle. But they gotta, gotta be able to spring back. So I don't wanna tighten these too much because if I do, it makes this hard to move. I, I believe these are, should just be tight enough to re so that that washer rests against it and holds the shoe in place, but doesn't really crank down the shoe. So that's the way I'm going to leave it, and I hope I've done well. Okay, so a quick double check to make sure we've done everything in here that we need to before we close this up. Uh, make sure that these pads or uh, shoes are even all the way around. That makes it a little easier to uh, get the drum on. Let's see if I can lift this up at all. <laughs> no. This, I'll tell you, with these springs, this this wheel is really tight. It's like I can't move anything. I'd like to, though. Alright, well. A uh, little bead of grease here on the spindle to receive that seal, and here we go. This thing is heavy. Okay, let's see. If this one goes on as easily as the other one, oh, good night. All right. Whew. And lift and push. Oh. Get on there. Get on there for me. And it does not. <laughs> Whoo, man, this is heavy. Lack in here. Oh, goodness. Come on. Get on here. I think I only need the mallet. Don't fall off. Whew. This thing is heavy. Oh, it wants to go. Oh. It's not hitting the pads. What is it hitting? Let's see. Uh, well, the grease is holding it on nicely now. It doesn't want to come off. Let's see. Come on. Whoo! Oh, man. The grease is providing a lot of nice suction there. Let's see. Oh. Bearing? Why is bearing so tight getting out of here? Ouch. The other one wasn't so tough. What's going on? Uh, make sure we got the right bearing here. Set this down. Oh, oh this keeps dirty sitting on his hands. Problem with our bearing. What's it doing? Oh, come on. All right, let me play with it. I'll turn the camera off. Let's play with it. So, old bearing with the same number. Yep. The old one. Let's make sure how it fits. Fits on there okay. Slides right on. Huh. Okay. A new one. Does not slide right on. Acts like it wants to. Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, now they don't want to come off. All right. I'll check the spindle here for burrs, maybe clean it up a little bit, see if I can get that to slide on. If I can, I'll pull it back off, reinsert it, we'll get this thing put in. Okay, so I, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, it's either the spindle or the bearing. It's resistant at first, but if you gently 
tap it on, it'll slide right on after the first, you know, I don't know, eighth or quarter of an inch or something along the spindle. Like I said, I don't, I don't think it's a spindle because I can get the other bearing on no problem. Maybe it's this part of the bearing right here, the inner uh, diameter that is just resistant. So I'll put this back on. Uh, I'll, I'll repack it with grease, put it back in, put the seal in, and we'll try this again. And then this time I'm going to have Robber w start whacking the drum with a rubber mallet while I hold it so that hopefully we can work it on and uh, get it on that way. All right, I got it on. The way I did it was I just uh, well, I, I put the hub on, hub on initially and then just with both hands I just shoved it really hard uh, on there and that seemed to work. I don't like it. <laughs> um, I don't know what it did to that seal back there. I'm assuming it stayed in place. I mean, the seal could come off if I pulled on the hub but uh, since I pushed and nothing you know came back I'm just going to uh, hope that that seal is on there and I think it is I don't think it's going anywhere okay and even though it's not a new drum a fresh coat of paint can't hurt I'll let that drive will work on the other wheel when I pulled off these axle hubs originally this seal was on there and it's just a piece of metal with an inner oil seal that wraps around the end of the hub, or the end of the spindle, and then there's a gasket on either side. And I thought, okay, it's sealed. But the more I've looked into this axle, this is an Eaton model 13802, the more I've looked into this, the more I understand that this is an oil bath hub, meaning that oil from the differential pours through here, out of this hollow spindle from the axle goes into this cavity below and lubricates the bearings, both the front bearing and the rear bearing. Also, on the back of the hub, there's an oil seal, which prevents the oil from getting out the back and getting into the brakes. So, I don't understand when I pulled this apart why all this was sealed up, because if this seal goes on here, as you can tell, it literally prevents oil from getting into the hub cavity because it's sealed. And when I pulled this apart, I mean, the whole inside of this hub was packed with grease that had turned to the consistency of beeswax. I don't know why the conversion was made. I don't know why this conversion was ever made to, um, <clears throat> to a, a, a sealed grease packed hub but I'm going back to the oil hub because I don't want this uh, I don't want this thing to be unlubricated and the bearings I pulled out of there were worn out they were scored like I said there was practically no grease on them they were almost dry the cages were loose and they were a mess so we're going to send this thing back correctly uh, and have these oil lube because I'm not putting up with this Okay, so we're done with this part. <laughs> I say we're done with this part. Uh, yeah, it was uh, lots of fun. But uh, we got the axles, hubs back in. We got the cone washers, nuts and washers, and the uh, lock washers back in. We got the two wheels back on each side. And uh, the way that you torque this, have some or spin the wheel and have someone spin the wheel while you torque down the first nut that you put in there uh, in front of the bearing. Uh, until you reach 200 pounds. And what that does is it sort of sets the bearings, you know, uh, where they need to be in their races and things like that. Adjust them.
And then uh, once you get it there, you back it off a full turn to relieve that, you know, that pressure. And then you, while you're spinning it, you torque it again to just 50 pounds this time. Uh, when you get to 50 pounds, stop, back it off a quarter of a turn. You may have to adjust it just a little bit uh, to allow for that washer, that dowel washer to go on because the dowel needs to line up while the little key uh, in a little pin goes in the key. So it takes a little bit of adjustment. Get that adjusted, then put your final nut on and torque that to 300 pounds. And we had to use a five foot long, uh, you know, cheater bar to get that where we wanted to. Then, uh, as I said, I'm not going back with this outer seal because I want oil to get in there. Uh, so uh, I just put a flange back, a couple of, of uh, gaskets, and uh, tightened it up. If it leaks, we'll fix it. Go back with some RTV or something like that. But this will be fine for the meantime. And... Uh, now, uh, the thing to do will be bleed the brakes, uh, adjust the brakes, because remember, the, the, the shoes are tucked in all the way. And then, even more fun after that. As you can see, this two-speed uh, axle, this differential, is leaking. And it's leaked so bad that this thing is now completely out of fluid. It's dry. So, uh, next thing to do after we... Uh, do the brake adjustment and bleeding will be to uh, pull this carrier off the front, this plate, pull all these bolts, pull this out, set it down, clean off both surfaces, and go back with some RTV silicone to, uh, to tighten that up, keep it from leaking. And then uh, we may have to do some cleaning or something uh, to the uh, second gear, the, uh, the uh, two speed actuator. Uh, put it back together and we should be good for a while. Well, we had to pull the axles back out <laughs> and there's an important reason for that uh, because of the rear end. Um, the axles, I wasn't aware that this whole carrier comes out as one unit and that it's just a basically the pumpkin is a shell but um the axles go through here and so you know you got to pull the axles in order to get this out now huh. next thing to do is clean up this flange clean up that flange uh, put some rtv silicone around it clean out the inside of all this and put it back together and fill it with some oil because we gotta get this thing running Well, hi everybody. It's a beautiful day out at Contentment. It's uh, late January and it's pretty cold out here. I say a beautiful day. It's, you know, it's high 30s, mid 30s uh, uh, with a slight wind, but lots of sunshine so we can work. Um, I'm going to show you what I'm working on. I've had this ongoing rust, uh, saga with uh, Russ uh, Dumpy, our dump truck. And it involves the brakes. We've got the brakes done on the back axle, but uh, we've developed a problem with the master cylinder. Now, this is an old, old master cylinder that was in the truck when we got it. Uh, I mean, it was just in the it was in the floor of the truck. They replaced the master cylinder at some time in the past with something out of a Dodge or something like this. This is a Ford, but I guess they just used whatever they had laying around out of another piece of equipment or something. And uh, they may do with what they had. You know how farmers are. Uh, but uh, when uh, so when we put the we, we we did a lot of research, and we finally found the appropriate master cylinder is supposed to go in it, and it, the the new one looks like this. But uh, there's a problem when we go to put it in. Uh, the pin that actually pushes against this, there's a plunger in there that squeezes the brake fluid out through the hydraulic lines to the brakes. Um, 
but the the pin that they had gone back with you know that runs from the brake pedal to this the pin that they had in there you know for that old dodge is significantly longer than the original pin uh that ford had in there and i don't know what they did with the old pin it's no longer around uh, I did some research trying to figure out what pin is supposed to be in a 1967 Ford F600, and I think I found it. Um, there's another truck here in the valley that's uh, same era, same make, and uh, so I got a picture of it, and I fashioned one of my own. But here's the old pin. <laughs> I don't know. You, you can make of this. This is different. As you can see, this is definitely a homemade job, and it's not that pretty and um yeah so it's like that so from pictures i got off an, off another local truck i was able to figure out the approximate size and uh length and uh style of the pin that's supposed to go in there and so i made one and here it is this is a 3 8 bolt an 8 inch long 3 8 bolt just like that that I cut the head off of and I cut the threads off of wound up with something like that and then I uh, to that I welded uh, what's called a shaft collar I just pulled the little allen nut out of it um, yeah. allen uh, you know screw and uh, welded it to this and then cleaned it up thinned it out a little bit uh, so that it was you know, appropriate uh, appropriate thickness it's still a little thicker than the original uh should be uh, a little th this is this is a little bit thicker than the original but what i had to do is i had to flatten the sides uh here so that it could run up because this is supposed to run right up alongside the brake pedal lever uh, and so this needs to be flat and then i took a bronze bushing and i inserted it into this so that now um you know you put a bolt in like that it bolts to the side of the lever and when you actuate the brakes when you actually when you push the brake pedal now it does a proper job of swiveling like it's supposed to uh, when you because the brake pedal you know goes up and down a little bit when you push it um and it's the correct length and as you can see this length lining up the um lining this up well it's about a half inch or three quarters of an inch longer than uh the than the original so um now we avoid problems with wearing this out because this is the proper size it rolls around inside there inside that cup like it's supposed to and hopefully won't have any trouble yeah, my welding is ugly i know uh i did the best i could but uh this should hold the you know two 250 pounds max that would be applied to it so all right so we just gotta install it install the new master cylinder and away we go